Can American capitalism survive? Yes, but not the way we practice it now. So when I began to think about why it is that people began to sour on capitalism, why it is that they began to see that it had lost its moral legitimacy, I trace it back to the middle of the 1980s. When we adopted or embraced four ideas that I think were useful at the time, but have now been pushed to such an extreme that they're no longer valid. They're no longer true. So the first idea was that greed was good, and that was true up to a point, but not beyond a point. In the long run, if th this system works only if the prosperity is widely shared. It also only works if people trust each other, if they're not trying to screw each other all the time. Because if people are trying to screw each other all the time, they don't trust each other, and they don't do business with each other, and they're not loyal employees and employees with each other, then capitalism doesn't work so well. The second idea is, um, that what people earn in the marketplace, their market salary, I'm talking before taxes now, um, is, a, is an accurate reflection of their economic contribution. It's what I deserve. But there's a problem with that in thinking that because the market um, uh, says that, for example, Steve Schwartzman, the head of the Blackstone Group, a private equity firm, is, because he earns $800 million in a given year, that he's worth that, that that's what he contributes to the economy. And that's actually not true. What that idea forgets is that how much people earn is shaped in part by social decisions, by decisions we make politically or socially collectively as to the rules and the regulations and the norms. So market income is not sacred. It's not a pure objective measure of your contribution. The third idea um, that we adopted was that, look, it's okay if incomes become much more unequal, if some people soar ahead and other people get left behind, because it, all that matters morally is that everyone have the same opportunity. Equal opportunity is what matters, not equality of income. But there's limits to that. Who your parents are has a big effect um, on, which, on, on, your, on your opportunity, your opportunity to take advantage of this open system. And so there really can't be equality of opportunity. At, there's some irreducible level where it's the luck of the parental lottery. The fourth idea that we embraced is that if we make our system more fair, if we change those rules and laws and social norms so that income is, is spread more equally, that there's a, there's a trade-off. Either you want fairness or you want more economic growth, but you can't have more of one and the other. And it turns out that there are, there are times and there are countries where that is true. But in the United States, we've passed that point now. And in fact, if we had more inequality, we're going to have less growth. And we're going to have less growth because people are unwilling to trust each other, to cooperate with each other, uh, to trust the institutions of the, of the economy and of, of our government. And as a result, the system doesn't work as well. Can American capitalism survive? Yes, but not in its current configuration. But if we could change some of the norms of behavior in particular, some of the rules and the regulations, um, we could revive American capitalism again so that we can continue to be at the top of the heap. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.